Growing up in a city that lies in the middle of the desert, I always felt the curiosity of how life could thrive in such an extreme environment. I always heard that the most biodiverse ecosystem was the ocean, full of life, from the smallest organism to the largest ones. Whenever I had the opportunity to go to the beach with my family, I was looking for all that biodiversity, and marine organisms were always there, waiting to be discovered. I remember observing them, creating designs in a naturist's journal, and just immersing myself in the hundreds of questions that flooded my mind. But I had no answer to them. No one was able to answer my questions, making this the first step to becoming a marine scientist. Every single day, the ocean touches our lives in ways we might not even realize. First stop, the internet. Did you know that an astounding 97% of our global communications, including the Bench Worthy series or video calls with grandma, zips through cables deep beneath the ocean? Every time you stream a movie, video call a loved one, or even send an email, you're relying on the vast network of undersea cables. The ocean is working as the world's largest and most efficient courier. It doesn't ask for tips, it doesn't go on strike, and tirelessly ensures we're always connected. Now imagine harnessing the ocean's immense power, Offshore winds alone could generate power not just for our Earth, but for 17 other planets, all carbon-free. But the ocean gifts are not just technological. Dive deeper and you'll find the medical marvels. Deep within our waters lies potential cures for some of our most feared diseases. Scientists have discovered marine organisms with properties that can combat cancer a tiny sea sponge living quietly on the ocean floor might one day save millions of lives. And who can forget the seafood? Seafood is the largest traded food com commodity in the world. More than three billion of us rely on the ocean as our main source of animal protein. In fact, marine fisheries alone offer employment opportunities to numbers aching to the entire population of Italy. The blue economy is a strong industry that allows many to make their living and provide for their families. Our coastal hubs pulse with life and trade, all thanks to the ocean's vast routes. It is the world's most efficient highway system, with no traffic jams, seamlessly connecting nations and cultures. Throughout history, the ocean has been a source of fascination, inspiration, and reverence for culture around the world. It has been the muse for countless myths, legends, art, music, and games, reflecting the diverse ways in which different societies perceive and relate to this vast and mysterious realm. The ocean is not just a provider of sustenance, and a means of travel. It is a rich tapestry woven with stories, traditions, and knowledge, enriching our souls and cultures in profound ways. In Brazil and parts of Africa, the Yamenaja celebrations pay homage to the goddess of the sea, a symbol of the ocean's nurturing and life-giving essence. These celebrations are vibrant display of devotion, gratitude, and communal identity, where offerings are cast into the water and the air is filled with music and dance, reflecting the intertwined destinies of humanity and the ocean. The ocean is also a keeper of our ancestral heritage. The underwater cultural heritage encompasses submerged landscapes and seascapes, also shipwrecks and other traces of human existence, offering glimpses into the lives and the wars and histories of our forebears. These submerged relics are silent storytellers, whispering tales of triumph, tragedy, discovery and innovation. In the Pacific region, ancestral voyaging knowledge, such as the Pacific Wind Compass, is a testament to the intricate understanding and connection indigenous communities have with the ocean and the natural world. 
This wind positioning system is a culmination of generations of observation, experience, and wisdom, allowing navigators to traverse vast oceanic expanses using winds, stars, and currents as their guides. So here's another thought. We often talk of the need to save our ocean, but what if the real story is how the ocean is saving us? In our fight against the climate crisis, the ocean emerges as our greatest ally. Every year, our ocean hoovers up to a staggering 25 to 30% of the carbon dioxide we release. It's the world's largest carbon sink, silently swallowing all the consequences of our rising global emissions. And the heat? The ocean has taken 90% of the excess warmth trapped by the greenhouse gases. It's like a sponge, soaking up the fever of our planet in years, starving to maintain a balance. The ocean is our planet's thermostat. It ensures our poles are in freezing cold and our equator is in blistering hot. Thanks to the ocean, our planet is a temperate, gold deluxe zone making it not just habitable, but comfortable. Yet, when we talk about the climate actions, the ocean often takes a back seat. We treat it as a secondary concern rather than the cornerstone of our climate strategy. But the truth is, the ocean offers solutions to reduce emissions and adapt to our evolving climate. So, how can we support the ocean in its efforts to protect us? Our primary goal should be to preserve and protect the oceanic systems that act as our shield. The carbon dioxide and the heat the ocean absorbs aren't without repercussions. We're observing an ocean that not only warmer, more acidic, but also rising. Increasingly, evidence suggests that we're disrupting its essential currents, impacting its inherent ability to regulate temperature but we can act. Mangroves, seagrasses, and salt marshes rank as some of the Earth's most affecting carbon storages. By protecting and rejuvenating them, we have the potential to capture over 1.4 billion tons of carbon emissions annually by 2050, a capacity that tenfolds compared to the land forest. Coastal ecosystems like mangroves serve as natural barriers cushioning communities from harsh impacts of intense coastal storms and floods by tempering winds and waves. Every year, mangroves alone prevent over 65 billion US dollars in property damage and shield over 15 million individuals globally. Should we lose our current mangroves? An additional 28% of the population should face heightened risk each year. In some cities like Miami in the US and Cancun in Mexico, mangroves avert property damages exceeding 500 million US dollars annually. But what about those residing away from the coast? These benefits will still be felt. To offer affordable insurance to high-risk coastal areas, insurance companies are starting to distribute some of these costs across all policyholders regardless of their proximity to the shore. So that is savings in your pocket. Then there is a coastal migration to consider. The movement of people fleeing the coast because of rising sea level. By safeguarding our coastlines, we could potentially have the number of migrants expected this century. So what can you do to help? It starts with awareness. Conversations like the one we're having today and it continues with actions, supporting marine conservation and research, reducing our carbon footprint, and teaching our children about the ocean wonders. The ocean is our silent benefactor, and it is time to start giving it back.